ever been like totally thrown when someone's afraid of something completely random? And I'm not talking spiders or heights, but something way out of left field. Yeah. Today, we're diving into one of those. Mm. The fear of Mr. Noodle. Mm. Yep. That Mr. Noodle from Sesame Street. Wow. We've got research articles, blog posts, even a whole piece from Cheap ABA, all about why this seemingly goofy character can actually be a source of real anxiety for some autistic individuals. Really? And to help us break it all down, we've got an expert on all things sensory processing and predictability. Welcome to the show. It's great to be here. You know, this is such a fascinating topic uh, because it really shows how something that's supposed to be entertaining um, can be experienced so differently by someone with um, sensory differences. Absolutely. You totally nailed it. Yeah. So for anyone who might not be familiar with Mr. Noodle, first of all, where have you been? Mm -hmm. How would you describe him knowing what we know about autism and sensory overload? Well, just picture this. You've got a grown man decked out in this loud, bright suit and he's trying to teach kids like really basic stuff, but he's doing it in the most chaotic, nonsensical way you can imagine. Right. It's like he's purposely missing the point. You know, like he's unpredictable. His movements are so over the top and the whole thing is just a lot. And that's exactly it. That's where things can get tricky for some people on the autism spectrum. Imagine experiencing all of that, the bright colors, the sudden movements, the unexpected sounds, but it's all amplified. It's like a recipe for sensory overload. Totally. It's like that feeling of being in a loud, crowded room, but like 10 times worse, right? Yeah. And you touched on something super important earlier. Yeah. Predictability. Yeah. What's the connection between a love of predictability and this fear of Mr. Noodle? Well, think about it. Routines and predictability are essential for so many autistic people. They provide this sense of security and control, which is especially crucial in a world that can often feel really chaotic and unpredictable. Yeah, for sure. Now, toss Mr. Noodle into the mix, the king of chaos, right? Yeah. His entire act is about disrupting what's expected, throwing order completely out the window. For someone who thrives on predictability, having Mr. Noodle suddenly show up, it's got to be jarring, right? Like totally anxiety inducing. Oh, absolutely. It's like someone just ripped their rule book for the world in half. And we're talking more than just being startled. Right? Oh, yeah. It goes way deeper than that. It's this disruption of order of expectations. For someone on the spectrum who maybe already finds like social situations tough or unexpected changes difficult, Mr. Noodle just throws gasoline on that fire. He embodies that expect the unexpected thing. And honestly, that's not a fun idea for a lot of people. And it's interesting, right? This actually links to a way more well-known phobia folk, cholerophobia, the fear of clowns. We see so many of the same triggers popping up. Okay, hold on. So you're saying people who are afraid of Mr. Noodle are probably also scared of clowns. What's the connection there? Think about what makes some people uneasy about clowns the super exaggerated features, the unpredictable way they act that make up hiding their real faces. Mr. Noodle checks all those boxes too. It's like he's this walking, talking trigger for anyone sensitive to sensory overload and unpredictable behavior. So it's not that Mr. Noodle's a little too much, it's that he's tapping into some really deep-seated fears that people have. Exactly. And this really highlights something so important about the autism spectrum. It's a spectrum for a reason. Not every autistic person will be afraid of Mr. Noodle or clowns. Some might love him, some might not care at all. But for those folks who are particularly sensitive to sensory overload and need predictability, Mr. Noodle can be a real source of anxiety. Like he's accidentally highlighting how differently people experience the world, how they process information without even meaning to. You got it. And that brings up another huge point. Understanding those different experiences is key to giving the right support. So what can we do if someone does have this fear of Mr. Noodle or other things like it? Are they stuck avoiding Sesame Street and birthday parties forever? So what can we do if someone does have this fear of Mr. Noodle or other things like it? Are they stuck avoiding Sesame Street and birthday parties forever? Not at all. There are some really great strategies that can help. One that comes to mind is gradual exposure. So instead of going cold turkey on, like clowns or Mr. Noodle, you can introduce them slowly in a controlled setting. So instead of a whole circus, maybe start with a picture book of clowns. Exactly. Or with Mr. Noodle, maybe try watching a clip with the sound off first or even from across the room. And then as they get more comfortable, you gradually increase the exposure. Got it. Like dipping your toes in the water before you cannonball into the deep end. Yes. Another really effective approach is cognitive behavioral therapy or CBT. Right, CBT. 
This helps people learn to identify and then challenge those negative thoughts and beliefs that are really fueling their fear. So it's like, instead of letting those anxious thoughts just run wild, CDT gives them the tools to kind of step back and say, hold on, let's think about this differently. Exactly. It gives them back a sense of control. And of course, there are always relaxation techniques like deep breathing or meditation. Those can be so helpful in calming down those fear responses. So it's like having a whole toolbox full of different strategies to try out to deal with those moments when anxiety starts to pop up. That's a great way to put it. This has been seriously eye-opening. I honestly never thought about it like this before, but it makes so much sense. It really just highlights how important it is to approach these fears with empathy, you know, to really try to understand where they're coming from rather than just dismissing them as silly or irrational. I couldn't agree more. What might seem totally insignificant to one person can be a very real and valid fear for someone else. And understanding the why behind it is so, so important. Well said. This deep dive definitely gave me a lot to think about. What about you out there? Does this change how you think about fear or even just everyday experiences? Let us know your thoughts. And until next time, keep exploring.